Hey guys, my name is Brian. I'm the owner operator at Lazy Squirrel House, and I thought it would be fun to start doing some video segments on moderate to advanced reefing topics. Um, I'd like to share, you know, some of the things that I've learned over the years. I'm, I'm still learning, always learning. Um, seems like uh, in this hobby, there's always something new to learn. Um, not always excited about that, but um, you all, I'm sure, can relate to it. So today, for our first topic, I thought we'd talk about pH. You know, pH is something that's, it's not really critical, um, but it's important to me. And the reason why it's important to me is because running an elevated pH, uh, the corals will grow faster. And it can be fairly significant. And the fact that I have a business and growing corals is the only way that I'm able to produce them. I don't go out and buy wild corals. So in order to be able to sell them, I've got to be able to grow them pretty quickly. And I buy corals just like everybody else does. You know, I'll buy some name coral from a retailer and then I'll propagate that over the years. Um, so pH is really, um, it's, there's a lot of different ways to be able to adjust your pH. But in our homes, there's people that are breathing, that are creating CO2 in the air. We've got pets, we've got um, some people have like gas fireplaces and gas furnaces, which consume oxygen, which cause the environment to be like CO2 rich. And so that CO2 rich air, you know, propagates um, through the system from the skimmer, um, or it just comes through circulation. It, uh, it gets into the water and makes it a, a, a heavy CO2 environment, which depresses the pH. So there's quite a few ways that you can increase your pH. If you're not doing any remediation um, other than, you know, just dos dosing the alkalinity, then chances are your daily pH is probably going to be somewhere around 7.7, .7, and if you're lucky, 8.0, 8.1. And, you know, when the lights go out, or right at light out is probably where your peak is, and then it just goes downhill, and it uh, doesn't start coming back up until the lights come on uh, when photosynthetic um, activity is happening in the tank. So um, if you don't do some sort of augmentation, that's where it's gonna be. And I'll say that you can operate your tank like that just fine. I don't feel that that's detrimental to the corals. Um, they will grow, they'll have beautiful coloration. You know, pH doesn't affect the coloration at all, that I've, at least not that I've seen. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily consider doing this unless you're really interested in growing your corals faster um, anything that you do or add on to your tank can always be a risk because you know it can go sideways because you you know want to make an adjustment and then some other thing happens as a result of that adjustment adjustment so it's one of those things that you need to be careful of um, when you're considering you know which option you're going to choose to increase your pH some of the ways are um, caulk waltzer um, you know there's pros and cons to that one pro is it definitely increases the pH but also, you know, if you're using it a top off, your evaporation rate's gonna fluctuate, which means the amount of caulk wash you're getting is gonna fluctuate. And so you're gonna have some ups and downs to it. Uh, if you do it in a um, controlled dosing way, you know, that's a really, really good way to do it. That certainly works. Um, and there's other advantages to doing it with caulk washer. Um, like, you know, you're increasing your alkalinity and your calcium. So you may not have to rely as much on two parts um, or not such a load if you're using a calcium reactor. So that's one way to do it, and I'll say that that is probably the least expensive way to do it because pickling line is very cheap. Um, you used to be able to get it at the grocery store. I don't know if you still can, but you know, a lot of the um, reefing store like BRS and um, other places sell that as well. So another way to increase your pH is to open a window. Uh, it can have a, you know, a mild effect. The drawbacks are, you know, you're, you could be losing heat, you're losing air conditioning, you're bringing in possibly, depending on the weather outside, additional humidity into your house, which, you know, those with reef tanks um, can be a real problem. But um, if you haven't, there's ways to deal with that, like a heat exchanger and, and things like that, but you can certainly um, help just by opening up a window. Um, let's see what other ways can you do. Um, you can plumb a airline outside and run the intake of your skimmer uh, to that airline so that way it's drawing in uh, more oxygen rich CO2 reduced air that does do a mild effect it's not 
It's not real significant, but you'll probably notice maybe even like a 0.1 uptick in your um, average on your pH. Um, you can also do just an airline with an aerator outside. That's usually not, doesn't work real well for people depending on where they live because, you know, it's going to get wet and get damaged or whatever. Um, another way to do it is with CO2 media. So CO2 media is, um, you know, it's pretty expensive and it takes a fair amount and you have to replace it often, but it works really well. So what I do here is, is you can use any sort of reactor. I mean, you can use a five gallon bucket, anything that you want. You put the uh, CO2 media in it and you pipe it to, you know how every skimmer has um, an air intake. So you run a hose to the air intake of your skimmer and then what will happen is uh, inside CO2 rich air will go into the uh, media. It will take out all the CO2 come through into your skimmer and then all those air bubbles that are in your skimmer here are no longer CO2 rich. They're completely scrubbed out. So it increases the pH of your, of your uh, tank by a fair amount. And when I say a fair amount, I'm going to kind of show you know, how significant this is. So what I've got here is um, I replaced my media in this and you can kind of see, I hope this shows up on screen here. So you can kind of see just like five days ago how each day my pH has gone up, up, up. And it'll peak out somewhere, uh, probably around 8.3 or 8.4. Um, right now it's sitting at, you know, an average of 8.13, and my maximum is 8.37, and the minimum is 7.92, uh, which is probably right around when I replaced it. So if we had looked at that without the augmentation, my pH would probably be running, you know, 7.7, 7.8 low, up to maybe 8.0 so it significantly makes a difference now as far as how much of a difference it makes in your coral growth you can see that and measure that because when you bring it online after a couple weeks to a month you're probably going to have to adjust the rate in which your alkalinity and calcium doses or if you're using a calcium reactor you may have to increase the drip rate of the calcium reactor because the corals will start growing faster and it'll uptake more alkalinity and calcium. So that's kind of how you know it's going, uh, working. I would say for me it's probably somewhere around 20 to 30 percent increase uh, when, I, when I run this versus when I don't run that and that's fairly significant. So I hope you guys um, enjoyed that. If you have any questions you can always just put that in the comments of the video and I'll try to